Hey guys, Soren here and welcome to Soren Gaming. In today's installment of our Boss Spinal Line videos, I thought I might share with you a little bit about what I've discovered about breeding for stat mutations. So first thing I'd say that if you're interested in creating a uh, line of dinos with some really high stats, um, you need to prepare yourself to invest quite a bit of time. This is not a very quick process and um, it's pretty repetitive. Um, lots of just rinse and repeat. I'd also say um, that if you're gonna be doing, well, really any dinos, you're gonna need lots of females of the type of dino that you wanna mutate. And then finally, assuming you're doing uh, egg layers, you're gonna need a pretty big place to incubate eggs. Otherwise, it's just gonna take way too long to uh, actually hatch the number that you're gonna have to do in order to see any results. So I'd say when starting out, the first thing you need to do, obviously, is uh, figure out what stat you're interested in uh, mutating on your dino. And then you really uh, need to make sure you have kibble for the dino. I know that in our case with these spinos, we went out and tamed like, I don't know, 30 Archintavises just to uh, be able to get the kibble for them. Because if you don't have the kibble for the dinos and you're uh, trying to get high level ones for their stats, you're really just not gonna get uh, stats high enough to uh, get you at a good starting point. So make sure you have lots of kibble dinos for the uh, type of dino you wanna tame. And then uh, finally you need to go out and nice just level. knock down anything you see out there that oh, is above nice. maybe 130 plus. And, and really what you're looking for, in my opinion, is a wild tame roll of around 30. Uh, I, I think you could probably go as low as 28, um, and then you might even set your cutoff as high as 32. So anything below 32, you don't tame out. But uh, anyway, you want to knock down all the dinos that you can find that are high level, check their stats, and if it has a 30 or around 30 roll of what you're looking for, then you go ahead and tame it. I'll tell you from our experience, we over the course of about a month knocked down, golly, probably over 300 spinos. And of those 300, uh, we tamed about 100 of them. And um, out of those 100, we were really only looking for a melee and an HP stat. And the best HP and the best melee stat both happened to have been 47. So, you know, I don't know. My experience is that that's a pretty good starting place. Um, you know, some people get lucky and they get like a 55 roll or something. But um, I'd say if you can start there, you're going to be in a good shot to get some really high level mutated dinos later on. All right, so let's talk about the mechanics of mutations. So the maximum number of mutations that a dino can have in its line on the counter uh, and still um, produce a mutation when it breeds is 20. So when you look up on the dino and it's hereditary, you'll see zero out of 20 or five out of 20 or 20 out of 20 or 20,000 out of 20. Um, but as long as it's below 20 out of 20, uh, your dino will have a two and a half percent chance to uh, produce a mutation whenever it mates. So if you have two uh, dinos that both um, are under the mutation counter cap, then you'll have a 5% chance to get a um, mutation. And so when a mutation happens, um, but two things happen. Number one, one of its stats will mutate, which means it will increase by two, and then uh, it will get a color mutation. Now you might say, Soren, I've seen dinos mutate and they don't get any colors uh, that show um, new that the parents didn't have. And the reason that is is because dinos actually have six color regions, all of them do. But uh, most dinos only show three or four of those color regions. And so what can happen is the mutation will actually hit on a color region that does not show and so you won't be able to see it. Another reason it might seem like there's not a mutation is because uh, dinos can actually mutate into a color that one of the parents already had in that color region, or it can simply mutate into a color that it, uh, occurs in nature. So just because you can't see a color mutation doesn't mean it's not there, and even when it is there, sometimes you can't see it. One thing that is important to note though, is that even if your dino is mutation capped, you still can mutate those stats. You just do it at a rate, uh, basically, that's twice as slow as if it wasn't capped and you were 
breeding it with one that wasn't capped. And uh, here in this example, you can see uh, an example where we do mutate a stat on a dino that is already mutation capped. All right, so here we have our dino Oxy, which we're actually raising right now. And you'll see its two parents are Blizzard and Riptide. So Blizzard's actually a dino that you're gonna see hatch later in this video. It's a mutated white male spino. And then Riptide is a dino that we actually bought from a, another tribe that was mutation capped when we got it, but it had a really good oxygen stat. So again, you'll note that the uh, female was capped with 5,610 mutations and the male only had 10 mutations. So he was able to, um, actually had nine and that 10 uh, represents the mutation that it did do. So looking at the stats of the parents, you see Riptide had a roll of 53 and now Oxy has a roll of 55. So that 53 mutated on the mother side, Blizzard had a 15. So that, that didn't come from them. Also, um, we can look here at the color regions. You'll see over on the right, the C0 through five. Those represent the six different color regions. You'll see the spinos actually only show the first two and the last two color regions. Whereas those other two, you can sometimes, when you put the dino in Smart Breeder, see the colors in those regions, but they don't show. And if those do mutate, then you would not see a mutation on your dino. Now you might be asking yourself, why on earth do we want to keep a dino with an oxygen stat mutation? And the answer is that spinos are actually super fast in the water and the oxygen stat functions as their movement speed. And for example, these spinos that are starting with like 5,000 oxygen, or maybe it's 4,400, but anyway, we get them up to 25,000. And at that point, they are almost as fast as a fully leveled plesio in speed. Um, and they are just incredibly pleasant to ride in the ocean. So back to our odds about of getting a, the mutation we're looking for. So if there's a 5% chance to get a mutation, there's still only a slightly better than 50% chance that that stat, once it mutates, will actually be the one that the baby manifests. So there's really about a 2.5% chance to get the mutation you're looking for in the babies. And making things even worse, um, you know, there's seven stats on both sides that the mutation can hit on. So that's like two and a half divided by 14, which I think is like a 0.2%. So that means it's like one every 500 eggs is the odds that you're gonna get a mutation. Um, I feel like my observation is I've observed getting mutations a little more often than that than what I'm looking, like the ones I'm looking for. Although because I am doing two stats at the same time, um, you know, it is, basically one in 250 that I get one of those. And I mean, I've you know just hatched 200 eggs in the last two days and I didn't get any mutation. So um, it might not be quite that low. There might be some mechanics that I'm not quite aware of, but it, it's pretty long odds to get the mutations you're looking for. So you really have to do this in bulk and uh, do it in the long haul over and over and over if you wanna see uh, consistent, um, significant growth over time. All right, the final topic that I want to cover is just managing that mutation counter because uh, if you're not careful, it will quickly uh, spiral out of control. So the uh, counter is actually additive, meaning that if your mom, for example, has one mutation and your dad has two mutations, then the baby's going to have three. Or if the mom has nine and the dad has 10, you're going to have 19. And essentially, that's your last time. It's probably going to be able to uh, breed and uh, generate a mutation from its side, um, assuming that you do get a mutation. It would be capped at 20, obviously. So if you want to maximize the number of times that you can mutate your line before your stat dino is capped, what you need to do is always breed your mutated dino with non-mutated dinos. And really the only way to practically do that is to use a male uh, with the stats with lots and lots and lots of non-mutated females. So like in the case of our spinal line, we started out with a 47 HP stat and a 47 melee stat. And assuming that we get roughly even mutations across melee and HP uh, throughout the course of this process, we're gonna end up with um, spinos that have 67 points in the melee and 67 points in the HP uh, before that line gets mutation capped. 
Now even once it gets capped, we will be able to continue breeding that line with all of our non-mutated females and get additional mutations. It will just be at half the rate. So essentially we want to prolong the amount of time that we can continue breeding our mutated breeder uh, with females at twice the rate. And, and again, you do that by just um, always, by never combining mutations in any of your babies. Otherwise, you're really gonna cut yourself short. <gasps> HP and melee, but it got the mutation and it's a male. Beautiful. All right, guys. Well, that's just about all we have for today. But um, yeah, just curious if y'all know of anything um, about uh, mutations and breeding that I didn't cover here and that you think uh, perhaps might help me or that I could put in the comments we could uh, share with other people. So definitely appreciate it if you'd let me know about that. And uh, yeah, gonna keep on putting out videos. So uh, would love to share those with you also. So hope you'll consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, just appreciate you taking the time to watch the video and hope you have a great day.